G'day everybody, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. In this video today, we're gonna to be taking a look at my tips round seven of the 2022 AFL season. If you're going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe on the video, that'd be much appreciated. And let's kick it off with my tips from last week. So my tips round six, and I managed to get a score of seven out of nine, same as the week before, I'll take it. Considering also I started off 0 and 2 uh, kicking off round 6 because I did tip the Giants and I did tip the Bulldogs and they both lost uh, But then I managed to get every single tip correct for the rest of the round So we'll just quickly go over the games Giants versus St. Kilda Friday night game in Canberra bit of an arm wrestle this game This was a very important game for Leon Cameron and a win was a must here and they weren't able to do the job. They were in the lead for a bit, and then they kind of lost it with a bit of momentum, but St. Kilda, their fourth quarter was immense pressure, and also their defensive efforts were subliminal, and they ran away with the game by 17 points. Then the Bulldogs versus Adelaide. Jeez, the wheeze, how they were poor on Saturday afternoon. They were just terrible. I don't understand what's going on over there at the Doggies. Such quality players, and they just cannot execute, but that's fine for the Crows because Ben Keyes, Rory Laird stepping up, Taylor Walker, what a star he is. And the underrated players like Tom Duda and Frampton are having games of their lives too. And what a win it was for the Crows franchise, beating the grand final runners up from last year by a point. Then Port Adelaide versus West Coast. About time Port get their first win of the season. And uh, yeah, this just shows that how questionable the Eagles are this season. I think a lot of us were expecting that they'd be a bottom four side, but geez, they really do look under the pump now. Still no McGovern back, still no Oscar Allen, a big few of those numbers. Uh, are still out, but that they'll become good maybe in the next few weeks. But yeah, Port, it's a, uh, a really important win, and hopefully this can spark up something, a bit of uh, confidence, a bit more, yeah, just winningness, I guess you could say. Then Fremantle versus Carlton, of course, tip the Dockers. A lot of people expected this was going to be a close contest, so I definitely did think that, but Frio just showing that they are a true powerhouse of the competition at the moment. Their numbers are excellent defensively. It's They're very hard to score against, very good defensively. And their midfield too, just so much depth. Akers, Brayshaw, no five. There's Sarong in there. Just stars left, right, and center. And defense is underrated. Forward line is getting the job done with Tabernair and Lobb. And Swikowski is another underrated player. They just have a really good core uh, amount of plays at the moment. Fremantle. Now North Melbourne versus the Cats. Pretty straightforward. Cats winning by a convincing margin. This has raised a lot of concerns for North Melbourne's defensive efforts from media. And, you know, it is quite understandable. It is against a top four worthy side. With the Cats winning by 10 goals over there in Hobart, how about Jeremy Cameron kicking seven goals? They're just seriously a team not to sleep on the Cats. Then we had the Q clash, and this is always going to be in favour of the Lions. Suns were kind of creeping up on them around that 20-point threshold where they could probably hit back in front, but Lions were always going to run away with it. And Zach Bailey kicking, I think it was, six goals. He had a day out, and the Lions just continued to dominate and continue to show their class they truly do have. Then Richmond versus the Demons. Pretty much everybody did tip the Demons here. A few people were... You know, maybe having the thoughts of an upset win here for the Tigers, but personally, I couldn't see it. It did look like the Demons were sort of under the pump scoreboard-wise, but hey, you know, they still managed to win by kicking nine goals, 22 double, almost triple uh, Richmond scoring shots, and 22 points it was, but they it really felt like more. They were in pure control, and yeah, another win for the Demons. That's 13 straight that they have won. Then the Monday games, the Hawks versus the Swans. Of course, I did go to this game. Make sure to check out my match day vlog if you haven't already. Yeah, crazy game. Hawks got off to a flying start, but you could say from the second quarter on, the Swans were in control and they were playing catch up. It took them until the fourth quarter for them to finally hit goal after goal, and they managed to kick a nine goal quarter and win by 41 points. And then the Anzac Day game. Listen to this game on the radio on the drive down to Hobart, actually. And uh, yeah, had a bit of everything. Essendon actually played some good footy. This is good signs for him playing more competitive pill, but hey, a loss is a loss still, so it is still concerns. They're one and five, whilst Collingwood finally get a win back on the board. And how about Jack Ginevan? He is the player in the news at the moment, shushing and all that whatnot. He is a, a very likable player and a very hateable player between both parties, but hey, he was the Anzac Day medalist as well, kicking five goals. What a champion he is. And uh, yeah, good win there for Collingwood. So uh, yeah, seven out of nine for my tips for round six. 
Let's hope we can finally do better than seven out of nine for round seven. Okay, before we get into my tips for the round, let's quickly go over the top 10 for my ESPN tipping competition. Make sure to join up, fellas, if you haven't already. Link is in the description down below. Free to join, and uh, yeah, it's all part of the fun on the channel. But anyway, the top 10, we've got Batruni at 10th with 53 points, 9th Kebab King, one with 54 points. Eighth, Millsy, 058113 with 54 points. Seventh, Vinny XBL, 54 points. Sixth, Crazy Kramer, 456 with 55 points. Fifth, Silk Serpent YT with 55 points. Fourth, Go Blues, 1012 with 56 points. Third, Jason's Raiders with 57 points. Second, Richmond for Life with 59 points. And first, once again, he's just... Maintain the lead, which is good to see. Banger Harvey with 63 points. So, uh, yeah, there is the top 10 so far. Righty, everybody. Now, let's kick it off with our tips for round seven. And we start off with the West Coast Eagles hosting Richmond at Optus Stadium. Eagles were, again, piss poor for a second week in a row, losing by oh, nearly almost 100 points, you could say. Whilst Richmond, you know, loss is a loss against the Ds, but they do did show a bit of upside against the Demons. We're playing some good football. Last year in this venue, it was truly one of the games of the year as Josh Kennedy kicked the winner, but that was when the Eagles were hitting a bit of form, hitting a bit of stride, and you could definitely see a bit of another upset win in that home crowd, but considering that we thought that could have happened against the Swans two weeks ago, and they got smashed, I feel like this is gonna happen Probably the exact same with the Tigers visiting the Eagles. And I am going to be tipping the Tigers here by a convincing margin of 28 points. For the Saturday games, we do have Geelong taking on Fremantle at GMHBA. Interesting game this one because this is just at the Cattery. And considering that Freo are one of the red hot form teams in the competition, it's at the Cattery, GMHBA. And it's a very hard ground to play at against the Cats. They're just so dominant there and they dismantled the Brisbane Lions, you could say, uh, a few weeks ago. I'm not going to lie, fellas. I legit do not know who to tip. This is just such a close tip in my eyes because do you go with the safer option, I guess you could say, of the Cats playing at the home field advantage or Fremantle, who are seriously one of the teams to beat so far in the competition, have got just great upside at the moment. I think I might be tipping the Cats here in a tight one, fellas, just because I'm pretty sure Fremantle do have the likes of Sean Darcy and Matt Taberner out. So that's just kind of, you know, moving the momentum to me choosing the Cats here, and I will do so. Fremantle, yes, they aren't a fully established side, and they could honestly just crush and burn in this game, but I expect them to put another quality display against the Cats. It's a good test for them too against probably a top four side, which they haven't really yet to verse this year. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be tipping the Cats here and I'll tip him by eight points. Next up, we've got Adelaide taking on the Giants. The Giants are just quite literally begging for wins at the moment. They cannot get a win to save their lives. And now they're taking on a very competitive Adelaide side at the Adelaide Oval. And because of this, just the home field advantage is making me wanting to tip the Crows here. Look, the Giants, we don't know with them. They're such an inconsistent side. They can play brilliant one week. They can play like a bottom four side. They can play like a top four side from week to week. But I think Adelaide, they're just in really good spirit at the moment. Just players playing really good football. Fans are up and about. Players are up and about. Taylor Walker's had an excellent return, and he's high on confidence. And because of this, it just has to be Adelaide for me. And they're going to pick up another win. And yeah, they're in some really good uh, form at the moment to Adelaide, and they're gonna win by 18 points. Then we've got the Demons taking on Hawthorne. Both had good performances last week out, and yeah, Hawks just look to be a, a team not to sleep on. And they're considering the likes of Kazai Pickett, Luke Jackson, uh, Tom Sparrow and the coach Simon Goodwin is going to be out with COVID. I, I don't really, I just can't see me tipping Hawthorne still. Demons are the team to beat at the moment and they simply look unstoppable. And with those three players out, I think they should be okay. I, I don't see him struggling too much without them. They're very helpful players. Sparrow's been great in the midfield. Cozzy Pickett as well, moving into the mids. And of course, Luke Jackson, we all know about him. So I am still going to be tipping the Demons here. 
Uh, but it'll be a good test because, geez, if Hawks can put up a fight and get a win here, that'd be unreal. But I think I'm going to be going with the safe option here. Tipping the Demons and they will win by 22 points. Next up, we've got St. Kilda taking on Port Adelaide at Gazali Stadium. So I'm pretty sure that's the stadium in Cairns. I want to say it's somewhere in far north Queensland. Uh, so yeah, interesting venue. Port, you never know. They've come up for an excellent win. Will this spark something? Uh, but against St. Kilda, they're playing some great footy too. It'll be a close game. I'm feeling a close game between these two sides. St. Kilda, yes, they are 5-0, but I am expecting that they are going to have a bit of a flat week here or there. And it could possibly come this week against Port Adelaide. So I'm going to be tipping still St. Kilda here, but in a really close game. And they'll win a nip and tuck battle by two points. Then Colton versus North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Yes, the Blues have been a bit of out of form so far, so... You think, yeah, you know, they should still get the win over North Melbourne, but who knows? Because you think if they didn't put the performance like they did against the Swans, you just completely write them off for this game. So North could seriously play some good football here, but it's just a bit insulting in my eyes to tip against Carlton. Yes, they've had a bit of a week off, but you'd still back them in here. Paddy Cripps is still in some uh, really good form, and I'm going to be tipping the Blues here. And I think people are expecting that North could pull off the upset, but... I'm back in the Blues in here. I still think they can uh, pick up a convincing sort of win and they will win by 25 points. Now for the Sunday games and we have Collingwood taking on the Gold Coast at the MCG. Massive game here for Gold Coast because they're starting to slip a bit. They're now 2-4 and four, and this is going to be worrying signs for Stewie Drew if he hits 2-5 and five, whilst Collingwood put up a good fight against Essendon and we were pretty much expecting that it was going to be a close game in the Anzac Day Fest. The big news in the Collingwood camp is that Brody Grundy is going to be out for 10 to 12 weeks. And they're without a stable Ruckman, I guess you could say. Probably have throw in Cox back in. I think Kruger's still out, so I think he's sort of the man to run it. And against Wits, I know the Ruck battle is a bit of a... It doesn't really justify a result too much, but it's a still a huge loss. And I don't, I don't think that's the main reason, but it's a big... It is a reason uh, why I'm going to be tipping the Suns here. I do expect Collingwood to win this game, but... Again, as I said a few times before, Gold Coast are uh, one of those teams where you just don't expect them to win in some situations and they pull off an excellent display. And also with footy tips, sometimes you're just going to do the completely unexpected tip. The tip that you cannot see happening. So I'm going to be tipping the Suns here. I do expect the Pies to win, but yeah, something's telling me the Suns and they'll win by 10 points. Now the Bulldogs taking on Essendon at Marvel Stadium. This is an interesting game because both teams are... I guess you could say underachieving at the moment, especially the Bulldogs. Eston, I guess you could say they've probably had a bit of a reality check of overachieving last season, but both sides are really in need of a desperate win, that is safe to say. It's a safe option to back in the Bulldogs here. It's really questionable of how they're playing such bad football with the list and talent they do have, but they just simply seem to be an inconsistent side at the moment, so they'll play bad one week, the next week they should play better, and because of that theory, I'm going to be tipping the Bulldogs. Yes. They were not good at all against Adelaide, but they are inconsistent, so I expect them to play better this week, and they will win by 17 points. And for the final game of the round, we've got a Twilight Special. The Sydney Swans hosting the Brisbane Lions at the SCG. I think when you look at both teams neck and neck, Lions seem to be a bit more of the classier side, the more convincing side at the moment. Swans, yes, they've... You know, he's been racking up wins, but they haven't really been doing it convincingly. Yes, against the Eagles, they did it, but against North and also against the Hawks, it was not an easy path to victory. Whilst the Lions, left, right and centre, they've just been doing it weekly so far. And because of this, no matter the venue, Swans upset the Lions actually last year at the Gabba. I think the Lions do win this game. A close game, I feel, but I reckon that the Lions will run away with it a bit in the fourth quarter and hold on to... Yeah, an important win here, uh, which will bolster them up the ladder of the lines, and they'll win by 16 points. So everybody, there is my tips for round seven. Hopefully you did enjoy. Make sure to comment down below and tell me what you think of my tips and feel free to comment down yours too. I'd love to hear it. But anyway, fellas, thank you for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy and I'll talk to you later, fellas. See you later.